So here's my force.com command line app. So it's written in Ruby and uses Thor, and I'll kind of get into that when we actually look at the code in a second here. But I first wanted to walk through here and show you the functionality so you can see what we're dealing with. So um, everything, like I said, it's built with Thor, so everything starts out with the Thor command. So well, I'm, in the, I'm in the current directory, and I can type in Thor and help, because I want to look at all the uh, tasks we have for this command line and app, and then type in Udos, which is the name of my Thor script. So I'll do that. And that comes back with a list of all the tasks that I have. So you can see I have a, a describe task, which you specify the object and just dumps the describe results to the console. I have export, where you specify a circle command, the fields you want to export, and a file name. It's going to run that query and export the fields you specified in the list to a file. Um, I have the one here, get token, which I use quite a bit. just returns an access token for a particular org. Uh, we have query, where you can specify a SQL query. It runs that query and it dumps the name fields for each record to the console. And then I have show config, which just shows the configuration parameters for a certain connection. So let's see how that works. So there's actually you can have multiple connections in a um, in the in this directory. So I can switch between a production org, a sandbox, developer account, whatever, and everything's kept in a configuration file. And we can actually switch back and forth to that when we run these commands. So let's dig a little deeper with the help into the show config. So I'll type in Thor help Udo show config. I'm just going to paste it in because I'm having a really hard time typing today. And it's going to show the usage. Here's the switch C with the configuration file. It's just the name of the file containing the connection parameters. And if you don't specify that switch, it's going to default to database.com.yaml. So we'll do that. So let's kind of see how that works. So let's go look at a config file. So there's Thor Udo's show config for the sample.yaml file. And I'll run that and it basically loads everything up from my YAML file and just shows it here. Just a quick way to look at the YAML file. So I'll kind of dig into that in a second here once we get into the code. So let's say let's go ahead and run through these tasks here. So let's say I want to do a describe account. So I can type in Thor Udo's describe and then the name of the object and that's case insensitive. So I'm going to do that. This is not very useful. It just dumps it into the, the console, but it's just it was just something fun to do. So, so let's get rid of this. Show the help again. So all right. So now let's let's get the access token. I use this quite a bit. I always want to use stuff with REST API. I just need a token real quick. So I can do Thor Udo's get token, and it's just going to return to me an access token. I can start using that. I can use that with you know, whatever application I'm using to actually get some data out of Salesforce. So let's go ahead and we'll run a query here. So this is one I use quite a bit here. So I may just want to run a query, say Thor Udo's query and the actual query I'm going to run here. And it's going to dump just in the name field for the account to the screen. There we go. So now if I want to actually use a different org, it's really easy to, to switch back and forth. So I can do Thor Udo's query the query again the C switch and then have the connection for sandbox.yaml so now I can hit that and you can see it returns just returns one account so I only have one account in that org so that's interesting okay so so that's kind of overview of the of, the, of all the commands here let's go ahead and look at the last one here which is an export so I'm gonna go ahead and um, let me pull this it's over here so here's my code and what you can see, you can see I've got, I've got the actual Thor file. It's actually you can see everything with the Thor script actually ends in .thor. That's how you can tell what it is. And then the YAML files are different configurations I have here. So let's go ahead and run this one now. I'm going to actually run a query, export it to a, a file. So we're going to do this one right here. We're going to do Thor export. You know, export. I'm going to run a query where the ID, the name, the billing state from accounts, I'm going to get 10 records back. I'm going to specify which fields I want to output into my CSV file, and then the name of the CSV file. And you can see there's no commas in between the, these parameters right here. And, and also, the fields are, are, are actually case sensitive because when you send data in the Salesforce, it's case insensitive, but when it comes back out, it's case sensitive. So if you had a lower case I here, it's going to throw an error that it couldn't find that. So let's see. So make sure we don't have an accounts.csv here. No, nope, no accounts.csv. All right. So now I'll run this. There we go. And let's see. Go back here. Oh, there's our accounts file. And there we go. There's all of our, our records we just specified. So, 
So that's kind of the code walk or the uh, functionality walkthrough. So let's go ahead and look at real quick how you would set it up. So, like I said, we use this Thor, and Thor is actually just a pretty slick little tool for building self-documenting command line utilities. And you just go to Thor and GitHub, you just run gem install Thor, and that's going to install the gem for you, and you'll be all set. I'm assuming here you have Ruby installed and it's up and running. So the next thing we need is we need the database.com gem because everything connects with the database.com gem and we're going to install that real quick. So you can install the database.com gem just with this, running this from command line and that installs that. So real simple way to get it up and running here. So let's go ahead and look at the actual code. So you can see here all I have to do is require the database.com I'm using that specify the class name and here's from Thor and then here's where I start putting together my different options um, so here's my here's my query there's what tells the help file about the query you can see also there's a method option this is where I can specify the C switch and it's got a you know the config file is the name of the uh, of the, the parameter in the hash what type it is what it defaults to what's its aliases there's a switch and then a description for the help file and so then it runs the query it actually connects to Salesforce, executes the query, and then just iterates over each record returned, and it outputs it. So kind of the same thing here for export is the same thing. Every one of these methods has the exact same switch, so this is all all the same through here. So this one actually just this is kind of a more interesting one. It authenticates, it gets the records back from the query, it opens up a new file, it actually look go, iterates over each record, and then for each of the field names that you want to export, it actually loops over those again and creates one line with all your all your um, text for the export together. And then it writes that line to the to the file. And here's the describe. Just runs it, authenticates, it runs describe for that s object, and then it puts that to the uh, the console. And then we get a token. Same thing. Authenticates, gets an access token. There's our access token and dumps to the screen. And then this will show our, con our config, which just loads the, the YAML file and, and dumps the config to the screen. And then here's authenticate. So passes over the YAML file you want to use, loads that YAML file in the config, creates a new Davies.com client for making calls with this YAML file. And then it authenticates with the username and password specified in the YAML file and then returns that client so you can start doing stuff with it. So, so that's kind of the heart of the application. One thing I want to look at was the um, sample YAML file. So here's the YAML file. It's pretty simple. Client ID, client secret, host, debug information like that. So you can turn on debugging to true, and it'll have tons of information. It's very chatty, so you can use that. So so that's a quick overview of how you can create a you know a command line application using Thor and Ruby, and really do some cool stuff with minimal lines of code. So I hope you enjoyed that.